What is going on everybody? You can call me Heroes 3 Guy, and this video is going to be an overview of the Factory Faction in Heroes 3 Horn of the Abyss. So today is January 2nd, 2024. Two days ago, New Year's Eve 2023, the Horn of the Abyss team released the long-awaited update that includes the 11th Faction Factory. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about that faction. We're going to talk about uh, the new heroes that come with this faction. Uh, there are four new unique hero specialties now that came with the factory faction. We're going to talk about their grail structure, what it does, how it works. We're going to talk about the unique structures that this faction has. You know, each faction has their own unique buildings, whether it's the stables for the castle faction, uh, the treasury for the rampart faction. So we're going to talk about those. Uh, we're going to also talk about the new artifact that was added to this game. Yes, there was one new artifact added. Uh, of course, we're going to also talk about the units that are a part of this faction. We're going to talk about how they compare uh, to their peers. And then we're going to also go over their special abilities and demonstrate uh, how they work. And then also we're going to talk about some of the patch notes and other random updates that came uh, with the release of this factory faction. And before we get into it, I'd like to take a few seconds to say that it's almost a year that I've had this YouTube channel, less than two weeks now to hit that year mark. Uh, any likes, comments, subscriptions would mean a lot to me, guys. Uh, you know, talking about my channel, spreading it word of mouth, things like that. Uh, if you feel so inclined, uh, super thanks are enabled. I do have a donation link uh, listed below and on my channel. And if you see any Amazon affiliate links or want to join my YouTube uh, membership program, that would all mean a lot to me. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into it. And I'd also like to say that I do have timestamps in the description below. So if you want to jump to, you know, the hero specialties, the structures, the grail, the new artifact, or any of the new units in the games to know or figure out, you know, how their special abilities work, feel free to jump to those and kind of bounce around as you see fit. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I did create a little bit of uh, a random map to kind of test some things out. I did a lot of reading and a lot of updates are coming out online. A lot is still kind of unknown, uh, but I've done enough reading and I've done enough experimentation to where I feel like I have a pretty good idea of uh, you know how things work. Oh, another thing I'm going to talk about and probably have a, a timestamp in uh, the description below for is an airship. There's a whole new means of traversing the map now. And I, I don't know how much I like it. I, one thing I like, I don't know yet, I can't say. But one thing I like about Horn of the Abyss is they seem to really stay true to the roots of Heroes 3 and not do anything too, you know, outrageous with the game. Uh, but this, I don't know. I'll have to see how much I like this airship. But we will, we will get to that. I digress a little bit. Um, so uh, the, the first thing we'll go ahead and talk about is the heroes. So they have mercenaries and artificers. So mercenaries are like their might heroes. Artificers are their, uh, you know, their magic heroes. Uh, mercenaries cannot learn water magic naturally. And artificers cannot learn, I think it's resistance and interference naturally. Of course, those things can be learned with, you know, a scholar or a witch, witch's hut or something like that. Um, and as far as their specialties go... Uh, there's a lot of, you know, common ones, you know, there's armor, that's good, uh, you know, weakness, sure. And then there are, of course, the heroes that have uh, a specialty of the various units that this faction has. Um, but there are, like I said, four new unique specialties. Uh, so the first one is Diplomacy. And at first it seems like it could be really cool, like maybe it'll decrease the amount you pay to get a uh, enemy unit to join you. Maybe it'll increase the amount that do join you for the gold you would otherwise pay, but it doesn't. It only decreases the amount of gold you pay when surrendering. So whatever gold you would pay to surrender to an enemy hero, uh, that amount would be reduced. So there's that. And uh, so then the next hero that has a unique specialty is Rathmont here and Frenzy is his specialty. So for those of you that don't know, Expert Frenzy, it takes 200% of your... Uh, you cast it on a single uh, ally unit, one of your own units, and it takes 200% of your defense value and turns it into attack value. But it does reduce your defense down to zero. So if you had a unit with 20 attack and 20 defense, you cast Frenzy on them, 
their 20 defense will turn to 0 defense, and their 20 attack would turn into 60 attack, because 200% of 20 is 40, add the 40 to the 20, you got the 60, which can be a very, very useful spell. A very, very useful spell, and this increases uh, the effectiveness of it. So instead of bring, turning that 20 into 40, it as he levels up, that amount would increase. Uh, so that's cool. That's something to kind of mess around with and experiment with. I wonder how much it scales and how ridiculous it can get on a very high level wrath mod, that sort of thing. And, you know, speaking of Melikar here, I wonder if he could get to a point where he's paying like next to nothing to surrender. Um, and then another unique specialty is Ziff. Uh, so he has lightning as a specialty. So as he levels up, his lightning spell does more damage. Nothing crazy, but there isn't another hero with that specialty. And then same can be said here for Victoria. Uh, she gets more damage uh, as she levels for the landmine spell, which is, eh, I think it'd be cool if it also increased the number of landmines laid, something like that. Or, you know, and I think this would be cool if maybe it did a small AoE, uh, for your units, you could frenzy multiple units. I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, this, when I saw it, I thought it could be a lot better than just reducing the amount of surrender. But hey, still some unique things added to the game. Pretty cool. Um, so those are the new uh, kind of heroes to the game and uh, some of the specialties. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is we can go ahead and talk about the, uh, the new artifact that was brought into the game. So if we come here... Let's just go ahead and grab some resources here. It may come in handy as we go through this overview. And the new artifact here is called Sleep Keeper. And before I show it to you, I am going to pick up a few of these other artifacts here. And if you look, it's a miscellaneous artifact. It looks like a Cthulhu, Cthulhu, you know, that Cthulhu font, whatever it is. And it essentially gives all your units uh, immunity to mind spells. Um, and for those of you that don't know, the original Heroes 3... This artifact here, Badge of Courage, although it didn't say it in the description, it gave your units immunity to mind spells. It was ridiculously overpowered. Of course, rightfully so, the Horn of the Abyss team removed that from the Badge of Courage, uh, so it no longer does that. But essentially, uh, it's, a, it's a relic artifact, so it is a more you know, rare artifact. But if you look at these artifacts, that makes you immune to forgetfulness, that makes you immune, your units immune to hypnotize, berserk, blind. This will do all of those. Uh, so mind spells include, you know, Berserk, Blind, Forgetfulness, uh, Hypnotize. Those are the spells uh, that you're avoiding, but you are also missing out on a few mind spells. Uh, you can't cast Frenzy on units that are immune to mind spells. You can't cast Mirth uh, also, but they can't get affected by Sorrow either. But all in all, I'd say the pros outweigh the cons if a, uh, a unit is immune to mind spells. Um, and what's nice is getting this from an artifact is that the Orb of Vulnerability doesn't negate uh, immunities from artifacts. So like if you had Titans uh, who are naturally immune to mind spells and you went up against someone who had the Orma Voter ability, they could be frenzied, they could be blinded. Well, if you have this on, the Orb of Vulnerability will not negate that. So that's a pretty cool, um, cool addition. And I'm interested to see how this plays out uh, in the game. But yep, there's the new artifact, immunity to mind spells with Sleep Keeper. Uh, so the next thing we'll go ahead and talk about is their Grail. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump into their castle here. And this is what a fully decked out factory town looks like. Everything is built. Um, and as you can see, they do have the Grail structure here. It is called Lightning Rod. So of course, like all other Grails, it increases your uh, creature growth in the town by 50% and gives you an additional... 5,000 gold per day, and then the unique feature of this is that every single battle that you have an enemy, uh, a hero in, at your unit's first turn, it'll cast like a chain lightning on all enemy units, and the damage of it is based upon how built up the town is. So right now, this is a fully built up factory town. So it's at its max damage, and it's nothing crazy it's 168 damage and but what's interesting is the way it's worded i did some testing and it says the damage is based on town building count so i edited it where i added like a bunch of other castles being owned by this player it didn't affect the damage at all um, i then put put it back to just owning this one town and i 
reduced the amount of buildings that were built in it, and the damage was decreased. So having a fully decked out gets you 168 damage, but I did also check to see if these stack, and they do. So if I were to have a second town just like this, it would then do double the 168, so it would do 336. And so essentially, you could have you know 10 fully decked out factory towns with grails and it'd be 168 damage for each of those so you know i bet you you could make some unique maps uh you know you could edit them uh, a certain way and you could have a mean enemy hero who you know from early in the game is just blasting through people it's i don't know we'll have to see how it plays out it seems like you know you tend to get a grail in late game and you know big whoop late game you start blasting everyone for 168 damage woo uh you know, maybe if you had had it like really early in the game, it would help you explore well. Um, but I'm sure you could create a map and make this a very interesting feature. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I haven't messed around with it much, so I'm just kind of telling you guys what it does. I can't quite form my opinion on it yet without messing with it. But fully decked out gives you a nice 168 chain lightning first thing at battle. And you will, I will demonstrate this uh, throughout this overview as I'm showing you other things. So even though I'm not going to demonstrate it right now... Uh, you are going to see it in action uh, throughout this video. Um, so we'll go ahead and kind of talk about the uh, unique structures of this faction. So the two things that are unique as far as new buildings is it has a bank and it has a mana generator. Uh, so the mana generator, uh, essentially, if you have a hero who's defending in a siege, it gives you 20 additional spell points. Uh, so as it says, you know, those spell points do not follow a hero when he leaves. So if you expended all your spell points, you go to your castle, you're trying to replenish them, but you get attacked, well, you're going to have at least 20. So it's just going to give you 20 additional. Nothing crazy, but it can come in handy. Not bad. And then the other interesting thing is it has a bank. So it's very cheap to buy, just 5 or 500 gold. And essentially, you click on it, and it asks you, do you want to just get an instant 2,500 gold? Boom. Gives you 2,500 gold. But for the next five turns, see my income here? It was 9,000. Now it's down to 8,500. So now this castle's income is reduced by 500 for five turns. So you essentially pay back that 2,500 gold over the next five turns. And then once the fifth turn is passed, you can do this again. So you could borrow that 2,500 every five turns and this could be pretty useful you know it could you know especially early game you dick around with it it could allow you to maybe buy your castle on day seven buy a new uh you know dwelling on day seven so that when the next week comes in you have a new unit building you increase your uh you know unit growth things like that um you know it could definitely come in handy messing around with it i, I could see some usefulness with it um but of course, you know, as the game goes on, you accumulate a lot of gold. It's not really going to come to play too much, but can definitely have its moment to shine, especially early game. And again, I still need a lot more experience messing around with these firsthand to really formulate my opinion and come up with some good strategies. Uh, but very interesting. Very interesting. Um, also, the Mage Guild does go up to level 5 in this building. That's pretty cool. I wasn't quite expecting that. When I looked at it, I thought probably a level 4. This gave me like a level 4 Mage Guild vibe. I didn't think it would be a 3, but lo and behold, it goes up to a level 5 Mage Guild. Uh, the resource silo does give a precious resource, which I like. It's not the plus 1 wooden ore, it is plus 1 crystal, which is what its level 7 units cost. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. Another thing that's unique about this faction is that they have 8 dwellings, as you can see. All other factions have 7, and that's because they have 2 level 7 units. And it's not like Heroes 4, where you can only choose between the two of them. You can have both. Really interesting. But we'll get to that in a little while. And then, of course, it has the Artifact Merchants. And then a pin, which increases the production of its level 3 unit uh, by 3 per week. Um, so those are the unique buildings and grail uh, for this new faction. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about the specialties. We've talked about the grail, the unique structures. I guess... We'll go ahead and just get into the uh, units now. We're going to talk about how they kind of compare uh, to their peers um, and then also their special abilities. And so I will say, I think one, two, three, four, I think five of their eight bring brand new, super unique spells.
specialties to the game. Um, it's, they're really interesting. Uh, and so the first one we'll go ahead and talk about here is the uh, level one unit of the halfling. So there were halflings in this game prior, um, just regular halflings. They're no longer just like a neutral unit. They now belong to factory. And then the upgraded version is the halfling grenaders. Uh, so if you look at their stats there, before we get into their special abilities, I'm going to go ahead and open up this chart. Now I've made this chart, gosh, like maybe a year ago. And it was so I could kind of get an idea of uh, various, you know, units uh, stats relative to their level. So if you look here, it's the level one units. And I didn't, or I went ahead and I put all these in and I kind of put the ranking next to all these guys. I just added these new ones in, but I didn't factor in how they rank, you know, kind of throw off the rankings. I just put their stats in there so we could kind of compare. Uh, but if you look, they have pretty darn low defense. I mean, they're towards the bottom of the barrel on defense. They seem to have pretty standard, you know, all these guys have, well, these guys have two, but, um, you know, four, five, six, they have, you know, above average attack damage is solid two to three. You look at these guys here, that's essentially as good as it gets. Uh, their hit points are really low. Uh, they're almost as low as it gets for level four or uh, for a level three or geez, level one. Sorry. Uh, although they do shoot, which is typical, usually a ranged unit does have lower hit points compared to its peers. Not always. Titans, for instance. Um, and also Storm Elementals, I guess. Um, and then speed is pretty decent. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. And then with their base growth and castle, you do get 30 of them a week. And they are relatively affordable here at 65. And then going ahead and getting back into special abilities. So they do shoot, like I said. They do have innate positive luck. So they can't have their luck uh, you know, drained below uh, to you know neutral or negative I suppose unless you had the uh, oh god not the spirit of oppression but the hourglass of the evil hour I believe that would actually give them it would break their positive luck and put it to neutral I believe that's how it would work and then they do have ranged attacks so not melee attacks but ranged attacks ignore 20% of enemies defense skill now that's not anything new to the game this concept um, you know ancient behemoths they ignore 80% of an enemy's defense skill, regular behemoth, 60%. Uh, Nyx warriors and Nyxes, you know, 40% attack is uh, ignored when they receive damage. Nyx warriors, 60% of enemy's attack is ignored. So we've seen this before, um, and it's definitely cool. You know, it's only 20%, but I don't think this is going to shine nearly as much as it does on Nyx warriors and ancient behemoths, mainly because this ability tends to scale into the late game. You know, as heroes accumulate more and more attack and defense, uh, you know, the negation percentage means that much more. You know, if there's a, a hundred attack, you're ignoring 20, whereas if there's 10 attack, you're ignoring two. Um, so, and I don't really see these units as ones that are going to accumulate a large enough stack come late game. They're typically going to have their time to shine really early. They're really not going to get picked off. Uh, you know, they're going to get, you know, uh, you know, you're going to lose, uh, have a lot of casualties on these units, and they're not really going to be viable late game where this ability really could shine. Um, but all in all, I think it's pretty cool. It's nice. They should hit pretty hard. Again, they hit two to three. That's good for a level one unit. Um, and they do shoot. So not bad. Not bad. Uh, so those are their special abilities. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about the next unit here. So it's the mechanic and then the engineer. So we'll go ahead and jump into uh, their little chart here. And if you look, they got seven attack, five defense. So kind of middle of the road. Uh, two to five damage, not the worst, not the best as well. And then same thing for their hit points, speed. Uh, they're not the slowest, they're not the fastest. Again, kind of middle of the road. Growth, 16, uh, not the biggest growth. They're more towards the low end on the growth there. And then the cost, 170, they're fairly affordable. Um, and then we'll go ahead now and talk about their special ability and we'll also demonstrate it. So they do have a breath attack. So if you look at their weapon there, it's like a flamethrower. So it does the same thing as like a dragon, essentially. So it attacks the unit behind it. Of course, you can hit your own guys. It could retaliate through a guy and hit their own guy. So it's essentially like having, you know, a dragon's attack, a breath attack. And then the unique new special ability that they bring to the game is they repair mechanical creatures. And you may be thinking to yourself, what the heck are mechanical creatures? Well, that is a whole new class of creature that is now brought to the game. So, of course, classes of creatures, you have the non-living, the undead, golems, elementals, things like that. Now you have 
mechanical units, and there are just two, and they both belong to this faction. They are the Automatons and the Sentinel Automatons, and then the Dreadnoughts and the Juggernauts, but we will get to those in a second. So, But what they do is they can repair them, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate for you guys uh, that repair and how that works. So if we come here, we'll tech this guy here. Not a fun matchup, definitely. Oh! Ah, well, that was a mistake. Okay, let me come to main menu, new game. I apologize for that. We gotta do a little bit of that. All right, boom. That did not take long. All right, here we go. So, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna kill these mechanical units so we can show the engineers re uh, repairing them. So let's just go ahead and fly across here and just one hit slap these guys right in the face. Boom. And oh, those guys only have 99. All right. Oh, see, that was the grail. So uh, your first unit's cast is kind of like if you have uh, Armor of the Damned or Iron Fist of the Ogre or uh, Angelic Alliance, it's going to cast that spell at your unit's first go. And like I said, it does 168 damage. If I had two of the castles, it would do 336 damage. Not bad. And that's for all your heroes. All your heroes. So, eh, all right, we'll, we'll see how that pans out, how it works. So if you come here, you can do your normal attack. You could click here, and there's a repair. So if I wanted to just move on top of these guys, I could. But if I just hover over them, it'll see at the bottom here, right across here, recover Sentinel Automatons, uh, 2,000 hit points. So you have Engineers, they heal 20 hit points per engineer, whereas mechanics is 10 hit points per mechanic. So you come here, you can recover 2,000 hit points, boom, it essentially resurrects them. It looks like resurrection, but with a brown, you know, instead of a clear little sphere floating around it. Um, and then same here, we can come and resurrect. Um, boom, we resurrect seven of them, and you do keep them afterwards. So essentially, you resurrect them. Uh, but the thing about mechanical units is there's a number of things you can't uh, cast on them. So you can't resurrect them, I don't believe. Uh, you can't, you know what, let me look at this. I know you can't blind them. I know you can't cast like friend or uh, berserk and stuff on them. But let me go ahead and uh, let me see. Oh, that's not right. I apologize, guys. I feel like I should have had... Um, should have had this set up for you, but I didn't want to misspeak here. Um, so identical attributes to other non-living units. So, okay. So essentially, yes, you cannot resurrect them. Obviously no animate dead. You can't do sacrifice to surround dead. But what's nice about them is they can't be berserk, they can't be blind, forgetfulness, although neither one of them shoot. You can't do frenzy. They can't be hypnotized. No mirth, but they also can't be sorrowed. So essentially, you can't. The only way you can resurrect them essentially is through the engineers and the mechanics. And then we'll go ahead. And if you come here, they can also resurrect units that aren't dead. So you can resurrect, of course, dead stacks. But then you can also uh, resurrect stacks that are still alive but just wounded. Of course, if the corpse disappears uh, somehow, uh, you cannot resurrect them. Uh, so that's essentially what the level 2 unit is to this faction. They have the nice breath attack, and maybe we can show you the attack at the very least, right? Watch them just get smacked, so we'll attack this way. Oh, breath attack, and they did. Okay, so yeah, breath attack, and they essentially resurrect mechanical units. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just retreat here and move on. Let's just do a little bit of leveling up. Woof. All right, so then the third unit is pretty basic. Uh, they, it's the only unit in this faction that has absolutely zero special abilities. They're just a plain old basic unit. However, we'll go ahead and see how they compare to their peers. Level 3, the Bellwether Armadillo. And they, of course, Armadillo and Bellwether Armadillo. They have 5 attack. Pretty low compared to its peers. Defense, it's high. It's high. It's as high as any of these guys get. More of a defensive unit. Pretty average damage here. I guess I didn't factor in their rankings. But looks pretty standard on damage. Hit points, not the lowest, not the best. Uh, and then speed, they're not very quick. They're more on the slow end. They're not the slowest, though. Uh, and then their growth is pretty standard compared to the rest of these guys here. And cost looks pretty standard as well. Kind of their bare bones unit. 
nothing too crazy about them. Uh, and then getting into the fourth unit here, we have the automatons and then the sentinel automatons. So both of them have this new thing, of course, of being mechanical, but then also detonation at death. And then the upgraded version also has no enemy retaliation. So that's pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and get into the level four. You look here, their attack 12, that's pretty high. Defense, that's relatively high too. They have a nice flat damage of nine. Like that's pretty good. That's towards the high end. These units are pretty cool. Uh, their hit points are nothing crazy. They're more towards the low end. They do have decent speed and they do have pretty good growth as well. Uh, and they are fairly pricey though, compared to their peers. And um, so we'll go ahead and get into explaining how exactly that detonation at death works. It's pretty interesting and there's some uh, things you have to do to kind of activate it, if you will. So let's go ahead and find what we got set up. Uh, so if we come here, uh, we'll go ahead and skip around until, we, oops, see, again, there's that lightning rod grail that did its 168 damage. But if we come here, you have to activate it. So it's not going to work when they die because once these units die and blow up, you can't have a mechanic or an engineer repair them. They're gone. The corpse is gone once they blow up. Um, so, but once you activate it, you can act, you don't skip your turn to activate it. So you activate it, boom, it's on. I kind of wish there was a way, like they changed animation to where you could tell they're activated. Maybe that would give it away to the, you know, to the enemy player, I guess, but you could always kind of, I guess, maybe if you could hover over them yourself and see, because otherwise if it's not their turn, you can't see. Maybe you'd want to factor that into your strategy somehow. I don't know, I'm getting too much into it. Um, but, uh, so you can activate it, and we'll move these guys forward too. Let's activate theirs. Ba ba boom And then let's just go ahead and move these guys forward as well. Oh, we didn't activate it, but we will. Um, and if you look now, when we come back to their turn, it's grayed out. It's done. If they die, they're blowing up. The corpse is gone. We can't repair them, although we don't have mechanics or engineers in this battle. And let's come here and let's go ahead and activate theirs. So now, how the damage works. So when it explodes, it does damage to all adjacent units. So it's like a hydra. Any hex next to them, it hits. They are a 2x creature. So, you know, it's going to hit all around them and it will hit all units, not just enemy units. It'll damage your own units so that's something to think about uh, but this can be pretty cool and the way the damage is factored is it is five times the number of sentinel or automatons plus 70 and it's not the total like the uh number of automatons is factored in isn't the total number that came into the battle but it's the total number that were alive and then died in that last breath attack so if i came in with nine thousand of these and then they ended up dying at some point in the battle, it's not going to be 9,000 times 5 plus 70. It's going to be however many were left when they took their, their killing blow. Um, so if you come here, we're going to attack these guys. There's one of them. So uh, 1 times 5 is 5 plus a 70. It'll do 75 damage around them. See the explosion? And if you come here, yep, should say 75. Boom. So then if we come on around... We take these 99 phoenixes again, so 10 times 5 is 50 plus 70, it's going to do 120 damage in a whole area around them. Boom. You look, 120. So then, I'll go ahead and demonstrate, uh, we'll come here, we'll see, show you how it can hit your own guys. Let's come on through, so this will be 100 times 5 is 500 plus 70, and these guys die, 570 damage is going to be splashed around. Boom. Killed your own guys, you look here. Sentinel Autotons exploded, did 570 damage. So it's interesting. You don't have to have it activated, uh, so you can choose to repair them with your engineers or uh, mechanics. Um, but it, this is interesting. Something to mess around with, something new, something unique. I like it. Um, so that is the level 4 unit. Let's just go ahead and surrender this and then get back into this. And so then the next unit we're going to talk about now is the sandworm and the olgi golgi i guess how you say it i guess it's mongolian for sandworm so essentially you could say they fly it's just like you could say teleport on the arch devils is fly moves underground they fly but they just do it underground they can move under castle walls that sort of thing move under obstacles they're essentially a flying unit and then both of them are naturally immune to blind 
and stone gaze. So that's cool. They can't get stone gazed by you know, basilisks, greater basilisks, or medusas and medusa queens. Uh, but you could still get them, I guess, paralyzed through a, uh, a scorpicore or manacore, or of course, no, they can't get blinded. They're not going to get blinded from a or unicorn or unicorn. So or the spell blind. Um, but then the upgraded version, they, as you see there, devours corpses for additional strikes. So this is really neat. And I'm going to show you guys this. It's, it's kind of crazy. And I was I, I te tested around with it, and I was like, holy shit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and attack these guys. So these guys go first. You're going to see the uh, zap rod here in, in battle. Oh, boom. So now we have six corpses on the map. So we're going to come here. We move. Let's just skip their turn. And look, when you highlight over them, see that little uh, cursor it changes? That's to devour the corpse. So now their next attack they're going to have two strikes. They come here. They haven't attacked yet. Now they get three strikes. And there's more. Now they get th uh, four strikes. Come here. Let's just eat up all the corpses and we'll show you what we mean in action. Oh, there we go. Boom. And one thing to keep in mind is if I click to attack them and they happen to land on the corpse before they attack them, they will still devour that corpse. So it's not like you have to spend a turn devouring a corpse um you uh you can i can attack from this angle and as you will see they will attack uh or they will devour the corpse and then attack and it's and i'm i should have checked this i should have fucking checked this before i started this video but i'm i did do a playthrough as these guys and i'm like 95 percent sure you don't eat your own corpses like i don't i think you only eat enemy corpses i could be wrong but i think i'm like right 95 percent Again, this this patch came out two days ago, guys. There could be uh, a lot of updates that come to this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you here. So I've swallowed a total of, will be six corpses plus my one attack. Let's go ahead and click to attack and check this out. Eat the corpse, attack, you get your retaliatory attack. Check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, that is pretty dope. You can only imagine, like, what if you have a mean stack of them and, uh, you know, you end up blinding their last guy? He's a real powerful stack, and you're like, you know what? While he's blinded, not only am I going to buff my guys, but I'm just going to go around and eat his corpses. Or perhaps you don't want him to resurrect them. Perhaps you don't want him to cast, you know, sacrifice or do any weird spells that involve corpses. He's freaking blinded. Eat that. There's so many cool things you can do with this. You can prevent him from resurrecting stuff. Like I said, sacrifice. Uh, you know, you could just blind the last guy. Yeah, and then come in for that killing blow with a bunch of attacks. Like that is really cool really like this this could be dirty this could be really dirty again i gotta play more with these guys and really get into the nitty-gritty of how these are going to play out but very new very unique i like it uh so that is their what am i doing that is their uh level five unit um come on yep i know i know all right cool so now we're going to go into their level six unit who's pretty cool here so you have a, a range unit of a gunslinger and a bounty hunter, the upgraded version. So they shoot, and then they have this new ability called preemptive shot. So the gunslingers, the unupgraded, they can only do it once per round, but the bounty hunters can do it an unlimited amount of times in the same round. Uh, before I demonstrate that for you guys, let's go ahead and go into the chart I made. Did I do the Olgi Golgi? Did I show you guys the Olgi Golgi? No, I don't think I showed you guys their stats. Maybe I didn't. We'll go over it really quick. So 15, that's first, dude, first, shit, first on attack, pretty high uh, on defense there. Their damage is solid. Uh, hit points towards the higher end, I'd say, middle, uh, above average. Uh, speed, they're the second fastest, and their growth is on par besides the magma elementals, uh, who are the worst level five unit. And then their cost is up there. That's, you know, 700 is most expensive, but I think you get what you pay for with these guys. You know, essentially they fly, they got some cool special abilities. Anyways, let's get back to the level six unit and the bounty hunter. So as far as attack, they're tied for first. Nice. As far as defense, they're middle of the road. Uh, their damage, 14 to 24, a pretty sizable range. They could definitely use a bless, although mercenaries can't naturally learn water magic, but hey, um, so you can't get the mass bless at least with a mercenary unless you scholar or witch hut. Um, but you know, pretty good damage, pretty potentially high damage there. 
hit points. Hit points, hit points, hit points are their biggest drawback. If you look here, I used to, you know, rip on Cyclops Kings. You know, they're a ranged unit, but their hit points are so weak. 70? I mean, I know that Enchanters, they don't belong to a particular faction. They're a neutral unit. They are a level 6 creature, and they have 30 hit points. But yeah, they do hit hard, and they do have that mass, uh, you know, beneficial spell that they can cast. Uh, but, ah... They do, they're not 30, but 45, it's pretty darn low compared to their peers. They are squishy, very squishy. Um, and then their speed is pretty decent. Uh, you know, eight on par with, uh, you know, the other shooting unit. I guess they're actually the second lowest here. You know, they're only faster than Naga Queens and Nyx Warriors. Growth, four, standard across the board. And then they are kind of up there as far as price, you know, kind of ranking third, I suppose. Uh, well, I guess they're all, it's pretty average price. And then as far as their special ability goes, that preemptive shot, let me show you guys this. So I'll explain what it does and then I'll show you. So essentially preemptive shot, if an enemy unit clicks to shoot a bounty hunter, you will pull out a little pistol and shoot them before they shoot you. So it's, it's you can think of it like you retaliate against a ranged attack but you attack them first. Um, so if you have a ranged unit and you go to shoot a bounty hunter, they're going to shoot you first before you shoot them. Like, that's pretty cool. But they will not shoot if they have an enemy hero next to them. So if you have, uh, or an enemy creature, so if they are blocked by an adjacent enemy unit, their preemptive strike won't work and you can shoot them freely. Um, unless, of course, they have the bow of the sharpshooter, then they can still use their preemptive shot even with enemy units adjacent to them. And so essentially, what you're going to see here is I thought to myself, could you just roll up to a strong shooting army with a super power? Like here, let's just show you guys. This is pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Boom, let's cast that. All right, it's our turn. And you know what? I don't really feel like shooting them. I'm just going to press defend and let these guys do their thing. Oh, oh, did you click to attack me? Did you, did you click to attack me? Oh, yes, you did. Goodbye. Each one of those guys tried to use their attack on me. I used my preemptive shot before they could shoot me, and it killed them. They were dead. So I will say, though, I did test this a number of times, and when I increased the total number of Titans to like 70, to where there were uh, you know, like 10 in each stack, the AI did choose to have them walk across the map at me. So the AI isn't always going to choose to just shoot you it's going to factor in your preemptive strike, and sometimes the AI is just going to have a ranged unit march towards you as opposed to shoot you because it knows you have that preemptive strike. But still, pretty darn cool. And it does somewhat give them, it does somewhat negate their low hit points. So, you know, if the enemy ranged units are like, oh, let's pick off their squishy ranged unit, they're going to have to think twice. So it's also somewhat of a defense mechanism as well. Uh, so really cool, really unique special ability there. And so now... We're going to go ahead and get into the first of the two level 7 units. What? All right. So we're going to actually go over both these guys at the same time, and then I'm going to demonstrate both of their abilities in the same battle. So first, we have the Coaddle, and we have the Crimson Coaddle. So, of course, they both fly, and then they, it says, they can skip a turn and get temporary invulnerability, whereas upgraded version gets temporary invulnerability without skipping a turn. And I'll show you what I mean. And then these guys, they are mechanical, of course, and then they can do a heat stroke attack instead of moving. And I'll demonstrate that as well. And the special abilities are identical between both the unupgraded Dreadnoughts and then the upgraded Juggernauts. So let's go ahead and go into that chart, and I'll show you guys how they compare to their peers. And uh, they're not great stats, but at the same time, you're getting two of them from one castle, so you can't really complain. Uh, so the Crimson Coaddle here, 21 attack and defense. That's towards the low end. Um, you know, Phoenixes, 21 and 18. Ghost Dragons, you know, you look here. It's definitely towards the lower end on both attack and defense. Also, they're last as far as average damage. They're tied with the Chaos Hydra, 25 to 45. 45 is a pretty high end. If you could bless them, that would really help negate that. Again, mercenaries can't learn water magic. You won't get mass bless. Artificers could, though. And then they do have the lowest hit points that a level 7 unit can have. Uh, their speed is 15. Not bad. I mean, 
if you kind of gr group these guys into two groups, you kind of have like the speedy flying units, and then you have kind of the slow lumbering, you know, guys with good special abilities. And then of course the Titans, the ranged unit in their own class, um, but they're relatively slow for a speedy flying level seven unit. Um, you know, ghost dragons are by far the worst. They're faster than them. Black dragons, 15 speed, not bad, but I mean, at least they have, they're the only speedy flying unit with 300 hit points. Uh, so, you know, and then two growth, their cost is pretty basic. They're almost as cheap as they go. The cheapest is 3,000, one precious resource. They're 3,500 and one precious resource being crystal. Um, so, you know, you compare them to like a phoenix, like, yeah, they got a little bit more defense, uh, you know, their floors higher, but their ceiling or their lower higher, but they're whatever they can't, they can go a little lower, but can go a little higher as far as damage hit points are the same, but they get blown out of the water and speed. I mean, eh, not the greatest as far as stats, but, and then we'll go to the juggernaut here again. They're kind of low 23 and 23. It's not the worst, but I'd say a little below average, especially for a, uh, you know, a slow unit. They are tied for the slowest level 7 unit uh, with the Chaos Hydra. Uh, they do have pretty decent damage here, 40 to 50. That's solid. Okay, that's higher end. That's above average, nearing the top. And then they do have that high end hit points of 300. So that is nice. They do have the base growth of 2, now, or base growth of 1, castle plus another one. And then uh, they cost 4,000 and 2 crystal. Pretty standard average cost of a level seven unit uh and then going ahead and getting into their special abilities let's go ahead and get here and boom and let's just do this so oh yep there was that zap rod thingy so if you look here this is neat and i i like this and there's a lot of cool things you can do with this it gets temporary invulnerability without skipping a turn so you look here here it is temporary invulnerability you can do this one time in the battle. One time. And so I click it. Boom. You see they glow a little bit. I wish it'd be a little more noticeable. They're slightly glowing compared to the other one there. And its eyes have a little sparkle to them. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they now are invulnerable. They cannot get hurt by spells. They can't get hurt by attacks. Essentially, they have no enemy retaliation this round. You know, so you come across here. You attack them. Boom. It's really neat because, oh, and if they get morale, well, still the same turn. They're still invulnerable. It's not just until their next action. This lasts until their next turn. So let's say, you know, they were the last one to go in a round. It's not like you use it and then the round ends and it goes away. No, it's going to last until their next action. So that's nice. So it doesn't really matter if they go at the end of a turn or the beginning. It's until their next action, they're invulnerable. So, hey, they're invulnerable again. Boom. See, they didn't get retaliated against. Now, if you look here on the other side, you cannot attack them. They're invulnerable. Immune to everything. Damage, spells, all of it. So we'll go ahead and activate theirs. As you can see, you come across, boom, until their next action. So it's kind of nice. If they're like the quickest unit in a battle, you can activate that, send them behind enemy lines into the mix of all the enemy units, have them do their attacks, and the next turn, fly them back. Uh, you know, oftentimes you're apprehensive to send a speedy flying unit, you know, into all the enemy units without other maybe slower supporting units to catch up to them and you don't want them to take a bunch of damage, this allows you to blitz uh, without worrying about them getting damaged and picked off before support arrives. And then these guys, like I said, uh, they have to skip a turn to get temporary vulnerability. So if you use it, boom, their turn's over. They do this really cool. I think they look cool than Crimson Coattles. Uh, more cool. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they do a little meditation. And I gotta take a drink, guys. Mm. Very thirsty. Ah, my throat is getting scratchy. And then same thing, you know, these guys can do it as well, and they can only do it once in a battle as well. So again, these guys can't attack them. Let's go ahead and bring these guys closer and we'll show you what the heat stroke is. So if you come here, as you can see, you have the heat stroke. You can't move and use it. It, um, you know, can attack with heat stroke instead of moving. So let's just go ahead and move them up. Let's have them march their slow asses up and do a little rock em, sock em robots in the middle there. And then let's have these guys come on up. And then these guys come across. And let's do some more rock em, sock em. Look at that. Look at them all doing their little fist slap a at once. Yeah. All right. So now it's these guys' turn again. 
See, new round started. Those guys are still invulnerable. You can tell they're glowing a little bit. Now it's gone. I can only do it that one time. We'll just go ahead and press turn. See, theirs went away as well. I could attack them. Still can't attack them. And see, they get out. It's their turn. They go back to the normal animation. Same thing there. Go back to the normal animation. And I think I mentioned, obviously, these guys fly. Um, so now to these guys. So heat stroke, it's almost like a three-headed, like, cerebri attack with a breath attack combined is the best way I can describe it. But, like, also a little bit more than that. So you see this hex? That does their attack damage in an AoE. So it's the same amount of damage as if I just click to attack this guy. So they do the same amount of damage, whether it's a regular attack or the heat beam, but it hits all units. So it's not only going to hit enemy units, but look, see, boom, I hit my own guys. And you can do it in midair. You can just, see, it didn't hurt anyone. And, uh, and what's cool about this is there's no enemy retaliation to it. So if you have an enemy unit next to you and you want to attack him or if he's in range of your heat beam, you might as well just use your heat beam than your regular attack if you're not going to hit any of your own units because they're not going to receive a retaliatory attack. So the heat stroke is no enemy retaliation. Like look here, from a hex away, I can reach back and I can zap them. And you know, same here, I could, I could hit my own guy. See, look at that, I can finagle it to where I don't hit all three, I just hit two. Boom. Really cool. No enemy retaliation. It's a you you know kind of like the Hydra, although the Hydra never hurts its own units. You can you know move and do it always. But this is really interesting. This is really interesting. Pretty darn cool. Very new. Very unique. A lot of fun. There's a lot of cool strategy and fun to be had exploring this very unique and new faction with all these new creatures. Uh, so those are the level seven units and their special abilities. Uh, yep, go ahead and get that Burt Tram leveled on up. And so essentially, that's everything I want to talk about. I do want to go over the patch notes a little bit. So we went over the hero specialties, the new artifact. We went over the Grail. Um, again, if you have multiple Grails and you build up all those castles with the Grails in it, you can stack a ton of damage, but that'd be a very niche situation. Uh, we've talked about all the units, how they compare to their peers. We've talked about... Um, you know, all their special abilities. So the last thing I wanted to go over here is the patch notes. So if we come here, what the heck is this? Okay, we come on down. There was a lot of stuff. Oh, we got to go over the airship, guys. So they added an airship. I'm so sorry. Uh, so the airship, it's like a new way to traverse the map. Uh, so, uh, of course, you have a boat, which has a shipyard. Well, now there's an airship yard. So if we go to Rathmont here, you can go to one of these air shipyards. Also, there was a rumor that you could buy an air shipyard in a factory castle. I read that online. It had even a picture of it in, inside the castle. As it looks here, obviously it seems they scrapped that. You cannot purchase an air shipyard and therefore air ships from a factory castle. It looks like the only place you can do it is an air shipyard. And they are not cheap. Oh, hold on. Yeah, all right, boom. So, oh, and also a new button. You can press this, and you'll visit uh, visit uh, whatever your guy's on. So it's 5,020 wood instead of, what, 1,020 wood? So you're not, not crazy expensive, but boom. And it's just like a ship. Uh, once you get in it, once you dock or dock in or out of it, you do lose all your movement points, just like a boat. And then if you look here, I went ahead and experimented. Does the Admiral's hat? See, obviously, you don't have the boarding unboarding ship. Uh, penalty. It does not work on the airboat. As you can see, I get in, I still lose my uh, movement. So that's something to keep in mind. So we'll go ahead and press turn and we'll press turn again. We'll get back here and we have Rathmont. He's in this airship and look, you can fly next to guys all around. You can go in the water. You, you can traverse the whole freaking map. It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, you can move over anything. Um, Although, gosh, dang it, I don't, I, I, I think you can move over darkness, um, like, uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that now. Now I feel like an idiot for not having thought of that, tested it for you guys. Um, all right, so now we're going to demonstrate what, uh, if that airboat works over the darkness or not. 
I don't know why I did that. All right. Let's come here. Let's buy this. Let's get in. And then let's go ahead and get Victoria on in. All right. Let's press turn. And let's see. Oops. If you can move over darkness. Nope. Doesn't look like you can move over darkness. Okay. So I just wanted to verify that as well. So you cannot move over darkness, but you can move in water, uh, over water, that sort of thing. You can be hovering. You can end a turn on top of water, as you can see here. But when it comes to dock off, you cannot dock off in water. You have to dock off on land. So I click that button. I can't move anywhere. You right click, exit out of it. You come here, you click this, you have to be able to land and then dock off on an adjacent piece of, uh, of land here. And I don't want to dock anywhere. Boom, let's come here and you can move right next to a unit. And then I want to dock somewhere. Boom. And then you lose your uh, remaining movement points. So I don't know. That seems like kind of a drastic change to me, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll play, mess around with it and see how it meshes with the game. So that's a whole new thing is the airship. And so let's go ahead and get back into those patch notes. Um, I apologize. Um, so of course it added the airship. Uh, there's the ancient altar again, you know, fighting 25 Haspids um, to get the Horn of the Abyss from that building. Added the new artifact. Um, all sorts of little things. Uh, a mechanism that prohibits powerful dead heroes from coming to the tavern. Powerful heroes can only come if no other heroes are available. Okay. Erased heroes in the tavern now have movement points, mana, and number of other parameters updated, as in case of death. Uh, tavern heroes now have their current army movement points updated, so no 2,000 standard movement points. Uh, stable bonuses now has been reduced from 400 to 300. Uh, and then when spell research is enabled, the town portal and dimension door do not drop in normal guild slots without research. Uh, but are guaranteed to drop if three attempts have been made before. So, okay, a lot of times people want to re-roll those Mage Guilds for those two specific spells. Now they guarantee you're going to get it after a certain amount of re-rolls, but you're going to have to re-roll for it. And then it looks like the hit and run ban built into Hoda is banned, so if an, att an attacker now is forbidden to retreat in the first round after casting a spell. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Um, summoning earth and fire elementals now have a changed power amount, but then they lifted the band on summoning different types of elementals in the same combat. That's cool. Uh, the firewall spell multipliers damage has been increased, and then they decreased Luna's specialty, uh, which is firewall, uh, from 100% to 25. She could be really, really dirty in certain instances. Um, and then Conflux, the, uh, prerequisite to upgrade the magic lantern, uh, used to require... Uh, the University of Magic, which was a fairly expensive building early game. Now it just requires a Garden of Life. So it seems like you should be able to upgrade their level one unit way earlier than you otherwise would now, like at a much more early point, very practical point in the game. And they will then get that no enemy retaliation. I think maybe increased speed. Like they're a really powerful early game unit when they're upgraded. And now you're able to upgrade them even easier. So that intrigues me a little bit. Uh, reduce imp cash value from 5,500. Uh, change number of steel golems in experimental shop. Again, you guys can just Google this, you know, Heroes 3, <coughs> uh, Horn of the Abyss Factory update patch notes. Uh, they changed the healing power of the first aid tent, uh, the value of the lizard warriors. Um, looks like leprechauns uh, decrease inadequate large coefficient via ability removed. So maybe they remove their ability and change their value. I don't know. Uh, change standard number of sea dogs on map. Uh, Cyclopses can now attack Castle Gate if Gate Hex has an allied creature standing on it. Okay. Uh, wall shooting disabled in Cyclops alternate action mode. Hmm. This one doesn't make much sense to me. Bone and Ghost Dragons now transform into Bone Dragons in Skeleton Converter. So if for those of you that don't know, you could put level 7 units in the Skeleton Transformer and it would turn them to Bone Dragons. I guess now you can just turn Bone Dragons to Bone Dragons and then Unupgrade ghost dragons. Okay, interesting. Um, optimize the behavior of AI controlled shooters in close combat. All right, I like that. Uh, the diplomat's uh, mantle, maybe I mean the diplomat's cloak, that are a uh, combination artifact, allows ignoring the hit and run ban only for surrender, so not retreating. Okay, <clears throat> AI knows how to use this. Uh, correct ability to surrender with diplomat's mantle in a town if there's no way to retreat added for AI. Okay, so it looks like the AI wasn't. 
if they had the diplomat's cloak, they wouldn't surrender or retreat in a town. Of course, if you have an escape tunnel, a stronghold, you can uh, retreat. Um, but it looks like AI wasn't taking advantage of it. Uh, AI does not consider a broken wall to be a reason to give up defending the castle if there is a moat. Okay, so they're kind of, yeah, an improved AI assessment for the Berserk spell. So it seems like they did some tweaks to make the AI a little more effective. I like that a lot. And then they updated some like template stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then they fixed a number of bugs. So yeah, they, they fixed a ton of little bugs. Oh, another thing I noticed, guys, that absolutely made me just so happy is now a dungeon castle, uh, the Mana Vortex, you have to click on it and then it asks you, would you like to you know, double the spell points of, and then it gives the name of the hero, the visiting hero, yes or no. Whereas before, you know, the first visiting hero that's just in there, it, boom, it gives it to him. And I can't tell you how many times I'd make the mistake of wasting my mana vortex on some bogus weak hero who's just chilling in the castle when I wanted to save it for my main hero. I'm so glad now that it doesn't automatically do it and it asks you first. So that's something else I noticed that they changed because uh, I did play a playthrough <clears throat> on New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day. Uh, kind of testing this faction out. And that was a really nice quality of life change. Um, so anyways, uh, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over as far as this faction and a little bit of the, the changes and patch notes uh, that have just recently happened. Uh, let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Uh, did I miss something? Did I misstate something? Did I misrepresent a special ability or anything like that? Uh, let me know. Uh, comments, subscriptions, likes, all that much appreciated, guys. If you feel so inclined, uh, channel memberships, donation link, super thanks, Amazon affiliate links, the whole nine, really, really make me happy. Uh, coming up on that one year mark of my YouTube channel. Uh, it's been quite the journey. I'm having a lot of fun and I plan on producing a lot more Heroes 3 content. So keep an eye out for more guys. And until next time, take care.